Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Habitat Update, the podcast about Japan and entrepreneurship based in and focusing on the Kansai area of Japan with the cities Kyoto, Kobe, Osaka, and so on. The podcast goes live more or less every two weeks uh, as an audio-only version on SoundCloud and iTunes, and uh, there's a video version on YouTube. Check it out. My name is Tugi, and here with me for the 15th episode... Once more, Sabrina. Hi, Sabrina. How are you? Hi, Tugi. I'm doing great. What about you? No, I'm pretty relaxed now. We had some very busy, busy week uh, days. Uh, well, last week was very busy. And uh, well, if anyone is watching now, and this is an incentive to go and check the video version. Here in the background, we have actually a screen with some uh, with a slideshow going on. Of oh, what a timing of the Hakosaka event. But more on that later. Um, any news from your side? Well, I think that uh, pretty much uh, right now we are getting ready for the spring, so we're ready in March. It's a pretty busy day in Kyoto and also in Japan. So it's, I'm looking forward to the next things going on here with the startup community. Oh, that's a good, hmm. very good segue actually. Let's start with, yeah, let's start today with like what's coming up in the next one, two weeks in terms of events or meetups. Uh, you shouldn't miss if you are in the area. Um, well, today, and this will go live tomorrow, is the 9th of March, and I haven't seen too much actually, and maybe there will be more announced. But the next really maybe interesting uh, meetup I saw was in the monthly Osaka Makers Meetup in Osaka, obviously, uh, March 14th, Wednesday, at the uh, Osaka Makers Space. Uh, I couldn't visit them yet. Have you been there before? Me neither. I'm looking forward to I haven't had the chance to... You, sh- you, you should. I mean, you're running a co-working yeah, space yeah. here. Yeah, I heard it's great. Oh, I see. But yeah, no, I couldn't visit them yet, but uh, go check it out. If you want to know more about the space, there is an entry in the Scrapbox uh, wiki we have. Um, check that page out as well, if you're listening here. Um, see descriptions for link. And more then after that march 20th is a tuesday we have an event here at the kyoto makers garage mm-hmm. a service design kansai meetup or it's called service design and drink mm-hmm. i think um it's the third meetup of the group focusing on ux ui and service design mm-hmm. uh pretty cool bunch of people and this time i guess the topic will be service design in public sector so if you're interested in that um tune in Come by, stop by, and it's 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 very fun. Anything for for anything to add for you uh, about that? Um, I'm very interested because considering the opportunities, I think the public sector in Japan has many opportunities, and I would say local organizations are looking for professionals who can provide specific service. Basically, I would say to to make sure that foreign uh, customers are satisfied with the quality of services in Japan. So I see many chances for startups developing mm-hmm. new thing, new things in the hospitality areas, mm-hmm. tourist area, travel tech, a few areas that you can see possibilities. Yet I see and uh, some people I met, they're like, you know, service design or UX design, it's not that of a popular topic or not really how to say valued in a way it is out of Japan probably um, what do you think about that? I think like, it has to do with maturity market, maturity of the market I would say Japan is still a little bit earlier than other hubs in the world when it comes to mm. uh, marketing and, and design and UX and service mm. design so in that sense I think uh, design is seen basically as a, like a product design or uh, more in the in the production field. I think in the services design is still way behind, and that's exactly where opportunities are for international um, entrepreneurs and even Japanese ones who see opportunities and can manage to find solutions to support uh, public sector. I think that. With the amount of tourists we get here now, we are in March. It's the highest season here with the sakura, the cherry blossom season. So uh, basic things like mapping, um, location, 
and uh, hospitality or hotels and uh, restaurants. I think there's so much that could be done and that the only, I think the only actor in, in this field that could afford to pay for that kind of service design, because it's not a very cheap solution, is, is, is a long term and it, it involves a lot of studies, research and yeah. so on, I think it would be the public sector leading and bringing uh, private companies to join it. So that's great. So you have this meetup and they focus on the public sector. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm curious, I'll, I'll definitely join and see what they have to teach me. Um, in a similar fashion, actually, and that's the point, like many people don't even know exactly what to picture, what it means, UX or service design. UI, and they, they cannot even tell apart like UX and UI design, right? Um, UI, you're just focused on the interface, which yeah, is still, very limited. No, I mean, yes. Well, UX is also focusing on interface no, as well, no. but like, the, the, no, the I don't want to get into this. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like for that, to clarify and to give an introduction, we uh, announce a next Habitat Friday meetup at GVH Osaka mm -hmm. on March 23rd. It's a Friday, obviously, and I invited actually uh, one of the service design group uh, members, uh, Aska, will join and give an introduction in U UX design and probably. Another friend of ours will join uh, long term, long term, like in the field, uh, very experienced, and talk about uh, something a bit more in depth and bring a case. What's his name? Marcel. Great. Um, so there's there's that March twenty third. We have the Habitat Friday. Uh, but before that, I was just you know it was a nice switch because it was in the same topic. Before that, on March twenty second, Thursday. We'll have a, well, it's not announced yet, but we're planning to have a storytelling night at Global Venture Habitat Osaka. Mm -hmm. um, it really started from the last month's meetup we had. It was about storytelling and how people neglect the power of, you know, communicating in the right way, getting to the emotions and being rela relatable to, to, to your audience. And we said, hey, uh, there was this storytelling event, one of the members he used to throw and organize a in Kyoto, uh, for some reason he had to stop and said, let's, let's revive this and see where it goes. And so we organized a storytelling night there. It will be really more this narrative structured storytelling as you think of and less uh, about talking about like the technicalities. Um, and one of the very interesting things to check out related to that would be maybe uh, as a reference the moth the mm -hmm. moth you know, you know that the m-o-t-h such yeah. a story, very popular global storytelling event uh, we hope to have something in this direction mm -hmm. but let's see how it goes where it goes if it goes okay very busy, very busy week actually huh we have like 20 22nd 23rd already three meetups then next week is a Ichi Pixel Osaka Games Developers Meetup March 27th mm -hmm. it's a Tuesday um, if you're interested in games game development if you're a developer go check it out and with that uh, we have the huge 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 uh, Japan event which is not in Kansai but slash Tokyo mm -hmm. coming up just around the corner March 28th 29th uh, we both will be there if you are around uh, just let us know and we meet up or many Kansai startups will be there that's good that's great we need more exposure of the of the Kansai scene yeah we're gonna have a Kansai area corner with a lot the of the Kansai stuff. corner the Kansai gang is in the hood I see that's gonna <laughs> be it's gonna be our neighborhood they're like gonna be yeah uh, uh, <laughs> anyway if you're then back in Osaka on uh, March 30, they will, 30th, it's a Friday, there will be another bigger event uh, focusing also on games. It's a Game Creators Conference Osaka. Mm, great. Uh, and I didn't know of that. There's some friends working in VR told me he'll attend. Um, sounds interesting. I've checked out their pages, unfortunately, everything in Japanese. Uh, besides just the titles, you know, and it's in English. Cool, yeah, and then you click and you need to know some Nihongo, but anyway, it might be interesting for you. If I have overlooked anything, haven't seen or not mentioned any event here. Uh, please comment, let us know, or just write under the, the podcast, tweet it out. 
so everyone knows and can join and uh, the ecosystem thrives. And with that, I want to close this section and get back to the screen with the images of, oh, hey, we see the Hack Award here. And you're here, that, that's her. <laughs> Hardware Cup. Hardware Cup. Yeah, let's go back one week and talk about Hack Osaka, uh, one of the bigger international global innovation conferences, as they call it. Um, and it, is, it was really fun and we had some very interesting uh, guests here. We had a panel discussion with, just as you, you saw on the picture, uh, Tim Romero, the host of the Disrupting Japan podcast and a serial entrepreneur. And other very popular names were like Oko Davasuren, I hope I pronounced his name right. He is the regional director of uh, Techstars Asia. Techstars, if you don't know, ladies and gentlemen, you should. Is kind of like the equivalent of a startup ecosystem. They are the big names started in uh, Boulder, Colorado, building ecosystems, and they are behind the brand of, for instance, Startup Weekend, which apparently Japan has the most uh, events of. Did you know that? That's the interesting. Largest number. The largest number of startup weekends is, in fact, in Japan. 68, right? 60, 66 or 68, yeah. Out of 420 something. That, that's so crazy. That would be uh, quite... I, I don't know what to make of it. Like, I mean, so many events. So it seems like there's an interest in startups and entrepreneurship, yet something doesn't work out. I think that the studio, student community here is very engaged in clubs and act cultural activities, and the Startup Weekend becomes one way to express that uh, membership of a group and it is fun so I think students, it is fun. It's really cool. students in Japan tend to have a lot of free time and mm. that's that's very uh, unique to the to the university uh, environment here I think there should be they have to introduce some twists to make more out of it like to engage them for longer not just come to these events and meet with the group but well, it was a difficult task anyway um, Another very popular person from Europe, Oscar Neppers, is the founder uh, of uh, co-founder of, of Rockstart, a Dutch accelerator incubator. Rockstar. Rockstart. Oh, Rockstar. Rockstar. It comes from rock. And start. Start. Rockstar. You know, okay. uh, they have that. Yeah. Uh, super guy. Super nice. And he was surprised, and I like I like what he said. Like he was like, "Oh, I'm surprised by the startups here, and very positively surprised because they all seem to focus on solving actual issues, you know, social issues and problems, and not just focusing on oh, uh, let's produce this, a cool product to sell it and make some money out of it." And of course, you have that everywhere else as well. But the majority here of all the startups, especially the ones participated in the Huck Award, the the, the, the international pitch contest of the Huck Osaka event. They were all really trying to solve uh, a real issue. Now, let's get into that, actually. Um, Kudos to the Hakosaka team, because I'm sure there's a lot of work selecting the startups to join their events. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tour around, and they really try to collect a huge group of applicants and then select out of there. Um, I don't want to name them all. You can... Actually, if you're interested, you can check it out on their webpage. It will be, I will put it into the descriptions. And there is a recording of the main stage area with all speeches and all like presentations and pitches uh, on YouTube on the Hakosaka YouTube page. Um, it's a video. It's a video. And, and I'll also link that one in the descriptions. Go check it out if you're interested and have maybe around four or five hours time. Uh, but the winner of the Hakosaka Hack Award pitch contest was it was called dot watch um, dot watch is how to describe it let me see on the page itself where do we have it here the world's very first mass producible micro braille actuator wow so it's actually a watch for blind people an interactive smart watch uh, for, 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 for blind people right and designed in a way they can really like feel and interact with it and and help them to help them, to yeah. to be more independent. That yes. was the whole point of their pitch. Yes, yes, yeah. And they had also like they he showed like they have also already in development various other uh, products 
like one of them was actually like a smartphone, a smart device uh, uh, type of, of uh, hardware, or they are collaborating with like uh, other cities trying to improve accessibility. Uh, what do you make of that? Do you think? I mean, it's a very niche, yet you have to consider it. It is very important. Well, I think it is a niche, but um, I think it's very interesting because if you think about the challenges for not only blind people, but there are other people with limited, with uh, impaired vision or limited mm, independence, true. that would bring a lot of uh, inclusion for those uh, who need that service. So I think the problem is real, the solution is very interesting, it is innovative and it is disrupting and that's why they deserve it to be the winners. I am surprised that I haven't seen anything like that or, well, I haven't looked for it really but I assume you would have heard of it, anything similar or like a competition or something not already in the market. Yeah, apparently Is not. it that difficult or is it just no one cares? I would say they would need to try to find some uh, strong um, stakeholder, either the public, private sector. I would say, let's say for the Olympics in Tokyo as an example, yes. try to do it before the Olympics so they make sure that uh, people with impaired vision or any kind of a uh, limited uh, vision can join the event and then make a case out of it. Mm. So that's that would be an opportunity because I think on a daily life, it's really hard for all of us who can see things to be really uh, touched by uh, the specific needs because they have many. And that was very interesting for, from their perspective. It made me think about things I never would have thought about because it's, it's not related to my, to my problem. So empathy was a big thing on their mm. speech. So, and I think all, all the jury, the judges were very, very into this. So obviously it was not his first pitch. He won other awards before and uh, the, the startup is known and has been featured in different magazines and then online journals. But nevertheless, it's good. They participated, it makes sense. And it's, um, it's, glad, it's, it's good that they won, yeah. And I'm sure they found some partners, and especially as you said, like looking forward to big events such as the Olympics in 2020. And uh, now Osaka is trying to, Kansai area is trying to win the bid for the Expo 2025. Uh, yeah, we need more of that, right? Sure. To include everyone. Um, then we had another award, another pitch competition going on, but I'll let you tell that story. So yeah, it's the Monozukuri Hardware Cup. So that's the hardware competition we had on a small stage near the uh, the, the main stage that where Hak Osaka took place. So Hak Osaka kindly supported us and sponsored the event with us and, and co-hosted the event because having such infrastructure at Umeda uh, station area, this is really, really, really glad to have Osaka City and uh, Hak Osaka organizers involved with that. Uh, that's unique, even though Japan has such a long tradition of electronics and technology industry, there is no such an event in Japan yet, so that was the second year. Uh, the yeah, you, original were there, you were there last year as well, right? Yeah, and the original competition is actually from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, for those of you who haven't heard, mm. has been a very interesting center for computer science and robotics aligned together. And right now is a center of R&D for companies like Google and Uber trying to experiment with new technologies. So it's really, really, really a hot hub for hardware and I would say in the States is the one that has produced the most significant startups not only because the talent's there which is true there's a huge amount of talent there but there's the support and the investment from investments perspective mentors and companies willing to partner with those universities or young entrepreneurs trying to do things so the finals are there this is the Japanese that was the Japanese uh, semi-final and the Japanese winner will compete against South Korean, Indian, Israeli, and um, American, North American, Canadian, and U.S. But the, the, uh, everyone else, the global, so, yeah, there the will global be, competition. Then. Yeah, the, the finals will be in Pittsburgh yeah, yeah. 
including with the one Japanese representative. And now, so the winner was a startup called Hachitama. Hachitama. And they are working on this IoT device. It's mm. the first smart toilet for cats, as all smart of you toilet. might have heard. Japan is known for a few things. Yeah. I would say uh, the toilet seats are automated and automated and cool smart toilet seats have been famous everywhere. Japan is also famous for how crazy people were about cats. So yeah, why not combine this? Yeah, yeah but more than cute, <laughs> more than cute and, and, and interesting for cat owners, it's actually, um, it's a way to prevent and monitor possible diseases that can lead to death of pets. Mm. So in this stage, they are trying only with cats, that's their use case for now. But if this is actually possible, it can be used for other animal yeah. purposes. So how does it exactly like it's just reacting it's, it's to the behaviors of the animal? There are sensors that yeah, can detect. Is. Yeah, so they have sensors that are proved by, by vats that would actually monitor. And in the case you have two or three cats, you can identify each one of them. Oh, the really? Yeah. Based on? Based on certain uh, medical... Uh, you, you have ways to monitor based on the medical... Uh, the chemicals. The chemicals. The chemical composition of the shit. It's, it's poop. Yeah. yeah. So it's based on the chemicals on, on the... Spot. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. it, it is interesting because when I first heard the, their pitch, I was in Tokyo. There was an event organized by the German Chamber of Commerce together with the Austrian Chamber of Commerce and the German Embassy. Um, I went there. They were the second place and their pitch was very, very interesting. It was very passionate. You can see they are passionate about uh, their area and they are the experts and apparently no one else is doing what they are doing so and they are using technology and medical uh, support I mean from the vet point of view there is a, a science behind it it's not only cute and useful oh of course yeah and it opens I mean I don't have a cat I'm actually allergic to cats so that's <laughs> me too I cannot super relate to it but it makes sense and it opens up really possibilities if you think further like you can you can combine like if you can actually measure or get all the data yeah and then combine it with kind of like cat like food pet food producers or whatever and then the idea the idea know. yeah the idea is to expand and have more possibilities or to general like care. research behavioral or yeah that was very interesting and apart from hatch them that was a very tough competition all we got 27 applications we had to select eight startups uh, all Japan based so that was the criteria um, the second place was a startup that that is working on uh, uh, it's called Shell Energy it's a startup working with wind turbines mm. considering using all the natural disasters that happen in Japan mm. and use it to produce energy which was very 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 interesting and the third one was smart shopping which is one of the startups we as makers of camp decided to invest mm. because they have a supply chain solution is a smart mat you can uh, use it for industrial b2b purposes to uh, uh, mm. attach to your uh, normal life you can use it for e-commerce and provide an integrated solution in a way that heavy things especially yeah. when you have to carry things you don't have to go out and yeah. grab your box and order things so those are the three that's startup. very cool the startups and you saw it just here in the pictures uh, the startups were also like uh, exhibiting uh, as, a, as a booth on in the in the what we call what they call the communications area mm -hmm. basically a showcase area for startups mm -hmm. uh, as well as the area where you there were like some speed dating and matchmaking going on with investors potential investors and and the startups, um, that was also part of the Hakosaka. So it's not just a conference with presentations, but you have several pitch contests going on and a show area. And the whole event was free. A lot of people showed up. And I, I really hope to see them coming back. It will, of course, come back and to grow or to become even more international and to see more and more interesting uh, startups.
Me too. I mean, that was great. And I hope both Hakosaka, that is more international, that is more, um, I think the creating process of Hakosaka is different than, <clears throat> than um, Hard Work Cup. Of course. But both of them were extremely good. And I think the level of the, uh, first of all, the startups, the pitches are getting better and better. Yeah, like compared to last year, I mean, nothing against the comp comp competitors from last year, but like, especially like also in the Hardware Cup, like you had some uh, improvements in quality and also in terms of like the quality of their pitches. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot of much work. more prepared. Much you see small small steps. I would say from last year, I've noticed from the last couple of years since I moved to Japan. I've seen the amount of accelerators and incubators are growing, it's growing, which does offer more options of basic support for startups mm. to arrive at such an event and have some basic, even their business plan now yeah. seems to be more shaped or more according to what investors would look for. And that's really important to have ecosystem partners to provide that basic. Without that basic, I don't think any startup anyway, anywhere would be able to go to a pitch contest and win it. After the Hakosaka, now let's move on. We had one more actually international event in Osaka. It's the, it was the Get in the Ring. Oh yeah. Osaka 2018. Get in the Ring is a uh, an event from the Netherlands. The name of the pitch contest is reflected then actually in the pitches because they had a kind of like a fight a ring set up you know a boxing ring and even the contestants would come in with like to, to rocky music right and like <laughs> dressed up in a little bit and like putting up a show and that was really cool and uh, the idea is like really to out pitch the other one right and uh, we had some very strong startups joining there and the winners were one in the middleweight category was Trillium Security, a uh, Tokyo-based startup, um, considering and working on uh, transportation safety, like okay. for cars. Um, I'll put up their page and you can check it out if you want to know the details. And then we had <coughs> in the lightweight category winner uh, Marui plugin, Max Krihimbauer, uh, part of the Global Venture Habitat in Osaka of our <laughs> Working spaces and, 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 and yeah, the habitat. He won and he didn't expect it himself. And he was like telling me, like, well, I just came to see, I had the page, but then I saw like this is actually a big event. And then I quickly had to meet up some extra stuff, right, to really uh, uh, surprise the people and, and, and show what he's got. And he won, and they'll be joining both the global competition in end of May, at the end, end of May in Portugal. Uh, that's very cool if you're interested in these things and you're in Europe, in Portugal, around that time, go check it out. Or maybe in Pittsburgh, April 18th. When is that? Yeah, April. April 18th. Right now, they are the North American finals that are going on. Mm. I've seen that Texas had a, a semi-final two days ago and the level of the startups of hardware is really, really serious business. So I would definitely um, recommend anyone, if you're around, to check it out. Great. And uh, that's more or less it from my side. Do you have anything to add? No, I'm looking forward to March, all the events and... The Sakura season. The Sakura <laughs> season. And let's hopefully uh, more startups will be able to um, go to international competitions like the two ones we mentioned now. And I think this is a great uh, experience for all the ecosystem, not only the startups but also investors yes. and supporters. And yes, and now before we fully close, I have one announcement now about the podcast itself. We've been doing this now, which was very experimental for 15 episodes, and I think we got to a point where we have sort of a routine. And uh, I'm announcing here that we'll take sort of a break, maybe one month, maybe two months, just to revise. Uh, look back, see what's good, what not, what works. Um, how can we, how to go on, like, continue from here on. And I'm also thinking about the next series of the Habitat Update Plus videos, possibly, but not sure yet. Uh, with that, also like, um, thank you very much to all the listeners. That's for you, right? It's not just for us. It's good for us to reflect and talk about these things, but also 
to inform the world out there. And in that sense, everyone is welcome to send us feedback, what they want to know, what we should consider, what we should change maybe. Uh, send us your input to habitatupdate at gmail.com or you can find me uh, on, let's say, Twitter at GwenST or Sabrina with the Makers Bootcamp at Makers Bootcamp. Anything from you to add? Like, what do you think? I think that's great that so many people have contacted us. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's an experiment. We haven't really pushed it very hard. Uh, we've been learning and uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, now it's time to take a break. Look back, see what we can do better, see what we can actually make out of it, where's the potential, and uh, come back stronger than ever, like the startups did now for this for the, for the events after a year. Sure. And with that, thank you very much. Thank you, Dougie, once more for having me here. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Habitat Update, the podcast about Japan and entrepreneurship based in and focusing on the Kansai area of Japan with the cities Kyoto, Kobe, Osaka, going live technically every two weeks, but, well, we just announced the break. See you.